has, have, has had a challenge getting a job when you've been out looking because who you've been dealing with has been hypnotized. And if you don't go there thinking, if you don't learn this stuff that I'm teaching you, you're not going to be able to go up against the crowd. You better see yourself where they cannot see you. And only when you do it here, according to the power that worketh in you, you'll be able to pass right through them. Some of you are going to be sitting in positions that, you, that they're going to say, how did you get here? All I did was thank it. And he said that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could even ask or think. You better think concerning yourself because your thoughts are going to determine your destiny. Touch your name and say, what do you think about yourself? Oh, Jesus. The thoughts you think of consistently brings that kind of condition into what? Being. Let's move on. The power of what? Now I'm going to show you something about the power of drawing. Let's get the pencil in our hand. Touch your neighbor and say, you better get this pencil in your mind right now. Because I'm going to show you the true art of drawing. I'm going to make you an artist right now. You must have a mental what? Blueprint before any line can manifest. You must know where you're going so you understand what line you're crossing. <laughs> you got to have a mental blueprint. Let's move on. You always physically contact minds who think along the same way. Come on, artists, lines. And later, such minds will be brought into your work. Life. Let's move on to the next one. See, when you start drawing, you'll start bringing the lines. And the lines will start bringing the other familiar lines that come to make up that one picture. Because all of you are on the same page. What are you on? Holding. What the mind holds within takes its form in the one. Watch what you harbor, you'll attract. Watch what you meditate on, you'll bring upon. Watch what you're thinking, you'll manifest. Prosperity and poverty are not one. They are not two things. They are merely two sides of one and the same one. Now, I knew this was going to get you. Let's stay right there. Because I think I'm going to have to close on this note because you won't be able to handle no more. Prosperity and power. Prosperity and poverty is the same thing. There's only one power. <laughs> Get away from this belief of other powers. There's only one power. All power that be is ordained of God. Prosperity and poverty both operates by the same power, the one power, the same law, the one law. But how come they're prosperous and how come that one over there is poor? Because one took the law in in reverse. One used the law right and the other one used the law wrong. Now, you better grip yourself one more time. Try to pull yourself together. You better grab a hold of the armrest of this. Because I'm about to send you out in space. Some of you may be lost in space when I get through with you. 
Some of you are going to go to your Bibles. You're going to run around for the next 12 months wondering, what have I believed? Some of you are going to want to go back and slap your former preachers with what I'm about to say to you. Some of you are going to be so disturbed you won't be able to listen to Christian television no more, Christian radio no more. When I'm getting ready to lay on you about evil is getting ready to blow you away. Evil in reverse is live. But what I'm getting ready to give you right now is getting ready to send you out into a dimension that you will not return to otherness again. You will have to go home and forgive yourself. Others of you may have to return to an altar in secret. I'm going to reveal to you the true essence of evil. There is only one power. What about the sa Satan? What about when he says, I, the Lord, I've created evil. I've created darkness. What about that, Bishop? I mean, the Bible speaks definite about evil. It speaks about the devil. Tell me, explain that. There's only one power. Then why would the scripture say that in Jeremiah or in Isaiah that he created evil because the same law that creates life is the same law that creates death the same law that makes you live is the same law that makes you die the same principle that if you use it correctly you begin to move mountains. Use the same law of speaking, but speak wrongly. You move a mountain into your life and resurrect it out of a sea. While the same law can take a mountain and cast it into a sea, that same law can resurrect a mountain up out of a sea and set it right in your life. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Now you choose with your thoughts and with your mouth. Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. The only devil there is, is your tongue. The only demon there is is the one you gave life to, the one you entertain. The only enemy that exists is the enemy in you. No, 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 I know I got 10 enemies on the block because they just talk about me all the time. No, they're talking about you because you talk about yourself. They only manifest because there's some form of rejection in you that came because of the fall through shame. They're only in your life to highlight the shame that has been in you. So through your shame, you create that illusion. Remove the shame out of you, one of three things will happen. Either they'll move off the block or they'll change and give you an apology or God will move you on to the next level. Remove it and it becomes eliminated from around you. What has caused you to act like that towards me? It's not really you. It's really me. What caused my children to act the way they're acting? It's not really them. It's me. It's something in me that has got to be dealt with. And only when I deal with it in me, then shall it be dealt with it in them. A matter of fact, that is really not them. That is really me in them.